welcome to MG Tracy. So today I'm going to be showing you how to get the most out of your dishwasher and how to stack it correctly. So one of the first things not to do is don't pre-rinse your plates before you put it into a dishwasher. The dishwashers are, and the soaps are designed to deal with the grime and if there's no grime on there the soap is not going to work as effectively as part of your cycle and could even damage your plates. The other thing, if you've got a very modern dishwasher like this new Bosch here, when you put it in automatic mode it does a quick rinse itself, analyses that water and it's the quality of that water that then tells it what cycle it needs to do and it'll run the most efficient based on your need. If you pre-rinse, you're not only wasting your time of water, but you're upsetting the how the machine's gonna run. So it's an absolutely, don't do it. And my next key tip for when you're doing glassware is don't store it loose like this. You're gonna find as the machine and the water goes around, this can break glass. You need to put it over these prongs so it's not going to rattle into another glass and that can scratch the glass, glass on glass, obviously glass is made of sand, glass on glass will just take away some of the shine and even worse it will make it crack. Now the next tip is to make sure that you load all your plates in the same direction each side, that allows the water and the soap to get in there. If you start doing this you can create areas where the water and the soap is not going to go and then you're not going to get your plates washed. So make sure they're all loaded that way. Another tip is in the UK we call this cutlery and in the States it's silverware but be very careful. If you've got these sort of gates that fit on the top here then put your spoons and things in the separate slots what this does is it stops the spoons, well spooning basically, and again, creating a void where water and soap is not going to get. And it's very important that anything sharp goes face down. There have been some fatalities in the UK where there's been some water on the floor, and unfortunately someone has slipped and they're landing on a knife. So for safety, you need to make sure your knives are down before you dock them into your machine. Now the next thing that people often get wrong with their dishwasher is they overfill. So you need to make sure that everything is correctly spaced out, but also check where you've got an arm like this. After you've finished your machine, make sure that it will spin. If it won't spin and it starts hitting something, you're not going to get a good wash. And then talking about overfilling, you need to not put, if you're using powder, too much in here. This one's obviously a tablet, just make sure you've got the right amount in there, don't overfill that, that isn't going to help and it can clog the machine and stop it actually getting the powder or the detergent out at the right time. The other thing to think about is when you're packing bits and pieces you don't want to end up with something here because if you end up overfilling and you've got the arm of a pan or something that can stop that little latch opening and then actually you won't get any detergent in your wash at all. Another important safety thing is your dishwasher needs to be plugged directly into the mains. You can't use training gangs or we call these rover points or extension leads. These cannot take the amount of power that a dishwasher will take when it's on a full heat cycle and unfortunately have been a number of fatal fires in the UK where people have just had dishwashers or tumble dryers plugged into this sort of equipment. It's got to go into a wall socket. Now in a lot of the new machines you will find you've got a third tray at the top. These are a good place for your big knives where you can stack them in here. If you've got small espresso cups they can go here. Lids are okay. If you use an older dishwasher be very careful with plastic. Particularly older dishwashers often have an exposed heating element in the base of the unit and if you use some plastic silverware, plastic cutlery or plastic bits and pieces that can end up in the bottom, it is going to melt onto that hot element at the bottom. So this tray is a very good place for this. It will still sterilise everything. It doesn't give it as big a wash because it doesn't have its own arm. But it still sterilise things like teats for babies, milk bottles, anything small can fit in that top tray there. Now in the second tray here, you can see you will often have extra bits that you can slot away. So in this Bosch, 
you've got these ones here that will hold wine glasses in place, stop them moving around too much, but they will still fit happily into the dishwasher. Now in the bottom rack of any dishwasher, this is where the machines give the most intense wash. So anything that's got carbon on it, baking trays, pots and pans, plates that need a lot of work, that's really where they should be. Don't forget, knives down when you're using the cutlery drawer or the silverware drawer. Now there's a lot of things you can put into your dishwasher, but there are some things that should not go in there. So wooden chopping boards, they would can't just take the heat of modern dishwashers and it will buckle and distort or split. But there's other things like cast iron, maybe you've got that from an older barbecue, that is just gonna go rusty with the salt in there. And you shouldn't really have bronze or pewter. These are things that will end up being damaged or pitted and they really can't take the heat that you're gonna have from a modern dishwasher. So when you're buying your tablets or powder, you need to buy little and often. Don't bulk buy it, it goes bad really quickly. You've really got to use it within about eight weeks to get the best out of it. If it's been stored in the garage for five years, you are not gonna get very good results. So little and often is what you need to buy, making sure you've got the right amount in there. And then always try and run the dishwash on the lowest temperature that you need, because that's gonna save you a lot of money. So how much your dishwasher costs to run is really about how much water it uses and how much electricity it uses. So on this built-in Bosch, we'll find we've got a whole host of different settings. You've got ones that are temperature based. You've got an express, which we use quite a lot. That is complete within 29 minutes, the whole thing. And you can just drop down the door when it tells you and let the uh, things cool down and then they'll be dry after that. If you've got a lot of glass, there's a special one for that one. You've also got a silence mode. So that's obviously quite good if you're trying to run it when you're asleep, but straight away, it takes four hours. So it takes eight times as long and it's using power for eight times as long as well. So, you know, you're talking about a significant difference in the price there. So all these different buttons have different effects but if you can get away with a short one using less power, less water, it's good for you and it's good for the planet. So in day-to-day -day maintenance and using your dishwasher, there's three things it needs really. It obviously needs detergent each time. You need to make sure that this one has got a rinse aid in it, otherwise you won't really have sparkling glassware. So that needs to be probably topped up once a week. And then the third one, that some people seem to forget all about is you've got to add salt. Now this acts as a way to soften the water. So most of us live in hard water areas and you'll find your dishwasher had a little foam. Salt goes in there. You probably only need to do this once a month. But without salt, you're going to shorten the life of your dishwasher because the heater element is going to get chalk and stuff stuck to it. And the other thing you need to do once a fortnight Undock this main filter and give this a bit of a rinse through. You can already see this has got food on it. And after a few washes, this all builds up. I'll do another video later on showing you a bit more of some of the other filters that you need to clean once a month. But for now, if you concentrate just on that one there, that'll see you okay for the first month. So I hope you found that useful, my quick guide on do's and don'ts for getting the best out of your dishwasher. I'll put together another video showing you more of a deep clean that you need to do every one to three months, depending how often your machine is being used. Recent tests in the state showed that 60% of the dishwashers in people's homes contained some nasty fungus or bacteria. So there was no point in having fantastic silverware and plates all clean if you're somehow leaving something that's not very nice on it. So that'll be in my next video. Please like, share and subscribe. Come back every day for a bit more fun here on MG Tracy. And for those who already have, thank you for your super thanks. And if you can send me some more, that'd be wonderful. This is Paul from London saying, see you next time.